Dear everyone, greetings from Asian Productivity Organization. Hope everyone is doing great and healthy. This is live from the APO Secretariat office in Tokyo, Japan, and we welcome all our viewers from APO member countries and beyond. I am Asai Tambi Monikam, and thanks to our viewers for joining us on this APO Productivity Talk series. And today we will discuss about unlocking the power of innovation for productivity in Asia. Innovation is a complex, diverse, and multifaceted process. The term itself refers to new, significantly different products and processes that improve productivity and benefit users. Innovation occurs through a wide range of activities carried out by a variety of actors. Some innovations are game changers, such as the mobile phones that left landline phones to gather dust. Much more common are incremental innovations, such as those that create more and better futures in mobile phones. While first in the world, frontier innovations like a driverless cars grab most of the headlines. Developing Asia receives more imputers from a steady stream of first in your market catch up innovations. A rapid changes in the production and business environment and globalization have had a strong impact on the development of enterprises. Along with that, comes the emergence of new technologies, new competitors, new legal prerequisites, and more stringent requirements for customers and consumers. In this environment, the ability to innovate is critical and necessary success factor for most businesses. Enterprises introduce new products, services, processes, models, methods, or any other type of innovation to create the most optimal values for the business. Innovation can help success to increase the revenue and profits, reduce the costs, increase satisfaction, and meet the needs of customers and consumers. It also helps businesses gain new competitive edge, create new markets, attract sponsors from partners, use resources efficiently, reduce waste, and improve business reputation. In addition, on Due to the latest um, or recent COVID pandemic, the economy was impacted on large scale in many countries. While some economies in developing Asia are near or at the global innovation frontiers, many others lag behind. Therefore, implementing innovative activities is the new way for an enterprise to effectively implement its strategic goals, ensuring its long-term prosperous, existence in the future. To give more insights about why innovation is so critical to the economic future of Asia by focusing on the current status, challenges, and benefits, including the increased productivity. Dear viewers, I am very much delighted to welcome our guest speaker, Mr. Rauti from Dubai, UAE. How are you today, Mr. Rauti? Thank you very much. I'm very fine. Thank you, everybody, and, uh, and happy to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, dear viewers, Mr. Rauti is a CEO of Tansley Digital, entrepreneurs and investor, co-founded Euro Technologies in 2009, the largest startup incubator and accelerator in France and Europe. In 2012, he was honored by French government and received the legendary honor for his contribution to French economy and the foundation of French tech initiative. He has implemented many growth strategies for more than 100 plus tech companies at all large stage during the last 20 years. Lately, he's acting as an advisor for governmental organizations in Middle East and Asian countries, aiming to support local economic development and establish tech world-class clusters to prepare the future of their economy. Before I invite uh, Rauti to start his presentation, we would like to encourage our viewers to send your questions and comments in the chat box with your name and country, and we would respond to your questions during Q&A session. Rauti, now the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Asai. Thank, thank you for having me here. I'm very delighted to, to make this presentation. So let's start. Uh, good morning, everyone. So let's start to, uh, to, to ask some questions. Um, do you know how much innovation contributes to economic growth? Uh, for example, um, you know, uh, WIPO um, um, used to, to, to make a study around job creation. And European innovative companies, for example, have 50% high growth 
rate of employment. Asian startups, for example, have created 3.5 million plus jobs and are expected to create 2,000 jobs per year more every year. In terms of product productivity, and uh, related to Google uh, Temasek Economy C uh, study, top quartered innovative companies achieve a 2.6x higher productivity when they come to innovation. Regarding patent applications, which is something very important in the innovation process for every country, Asia accounted for 68% of the 3.5 million patent applications filled worldwide in 2020, which is a huge number. And finally, because this is where we are going to focus on, related to GDP growth, innovation fueled 50% of the economic growth in the OECD countries from 1995 to 2005. And this is why we're here today and we, why we are going to discuss all together about unlocking the power of innovation in Asia, navigating and certain times to transform the economic landscape and build a stronger future. This is what I want to focus and this is why it's so important today to be with you. Let's jump to, uh, to, to this. Um, all of us have been suffering from the pan pandemic and all of us have been like fearing about the future and see how the countries, the companies, the, the, you know, the employees of these companies will face the future regarding this pandemic. So it's interesting to see how much Asia was recovering from this post-pandemic uh, you know, situation and tr trying to tackle uh, the uncertainty through innovation support. For example, uh, in 2022, the region's GDP outlook were like showing minus 2.2% and jumped to 6.5% in 2023. But when you look at this number, there is a huge difference between countries. For example, you cannot compare India or China growth with, for example, Mongolia, Nepal, and Bangladesh growth, which is completely different. We have been, th this have been showing also some stuff recently, which are the goods and services prices inflation and the, the unemployment rate, which was increasing every year. So this gives like some room for innovation and some pocket for growth, because as you see, usually problems means opportunities. And there is this kind of growth are available now in some sectors like healthcare, you know, e-commerce and FinTech, for example, but also like everything related to logistics and supply chain. You know that during the pandemic, uh, you know, some of the countries have been like booming into log logistics. Why? Because, you know, we were out of, uh, you know, you know, access to goods and access to services. And as used to say, for example, uh, Winston Churchill, uh, never let a good crisis go to waste. And this is in this period of crisis that usually the best successes into innovation uh, programs, uh, innovation, you know, uh, successes are coming with crisis usually. Uh, are we getting into a crisis? Are we exiting a crisis? This is something that we are going to talk about, uh, you know, in the next in the next slides. But let's have a look at the startups landscape in Asia. Why I'm talking about startups? Because usually they are the vehicles that are bringing innovation to a country, to an economy. And when you look at what's happening in Asia during the last years, uh, internet economy was powered by, by entrepreneurship dynamism and increasing VC funding. And this is these three pillars that were giving Asia, uh, you know, a boost and a boom. For example, when you come to e internet economy, um, in 2019, uh, you know, internet economy was giving a hundred billion value in the Southeast Asia, which is huge. And it was increasing, uh, you know, 39% from the previous year. So it was amazing to see how internet economy was booming in Asia. In the same time, that was held by some uh, very brilliant entrepreneurs in the region. As you can see on the slide, uh, there, is there is more than 10,000 active startups in Asia, in South Asia in 2021, with a cumulative valuation of 140 billion USD. And this is why startups are very important for innovation in countries and innovation uh, within economies. And VC funding, is also something important to look at. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, following the study of uh, Deal Street Asia, uh, there were like 71.9 billion USD total funding in Asia in 2020. And, you know, I'm sure if we look at the figures in 2021, it was higher. Why? Because people were exiting from the pandemic 
and they wanted to invest in two companies. And we have been reaching the top of investment in 2021, not only in Asia, but all over the planet. And this is a good uh, signal for the region. Why? Because it seems that the, it seems that the, the confidence is still here till now uh, with the investors coming and investing into startup. Uh, we all think that in 2023, it will be decreasing. Why? Because people are uh, feeling that something is happening on the market and the investment are slowing down. Or maybe it's completely different. People now are looking at more profitable company rather than, than companies that are growing, and which is good for economy. But we're going to talk about it in the, in, the, in the next slides. And regarding the VC funding, which is an important part, an important piece of the innovation uh, you know, ecosystem in countries and economies. Uh, we have been assisting to an uh, uh, increase of 10.7 percent, uh, led by three industries. And within these three industries, uh, you have one of them which is very good now in uh, three or two of them, sorry, which are very good now in Asia, which is uh, which are fintechs and logistics. And it's interesting to see this. Why? Because trying uh, people are trying to solve real problems locally in economies. You cannot get access to some goods or some services, so logistic services are increasing. And, uh, and uh, the internet is helping these services to be, uh, to, to, to be uh, more efficient and more accessible for, uh, for a bigger number of people. Same for fintech. A lot of people now are trying to solve problem of, uh, you know, uh, people who can, cannot get access to banks, uh, bank services, for example. And fintech, fintech is helping this kind, of, this kind of problems. So when you look at what's happening now in Asia um, and facing the problem that, uh, that occurring now in Asia, a lot of startups are coming on the ground, trying to solve problems, bringing innovation in the country. And this is how these countries and this is how this economy are going to grow up in, 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 in the coming years. Um, I was talking about the, the, the countries that were not at the same level that, than others, for example, smaller country or, or countries uh, with, you, with difficult economies. And they have good examples to follow. Uh, you know, they have good examples to follow. And when you look at what's happening, for example, in some countries in Asia, uh, when you look at you know what's happening in South Korea, for example, uh, you see that the effort that Co uh, South Korea has been doing during the last years uh, with putting a, a strong focus on R and D and uh, and and trying to transform uh, you know very traditional uh, you know businesses in the country and very traditional industries in the country by uh, you know developing a strong focus on R and D. Um, for example, it has helped the the country in 2020, for example, uh, to to reach. Uh, one, 174 billion USD in export, which which is which is crazy for 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 a country like 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 Korea, uh, very innovative one, but also like very active when it comes to startup and innovation. And uh, in Korea, you know that the leading markets are ICT and electronics, but not only Korea is now coming to new to new uh, you know sectors, not only like these big players like some Samsung, LG. Now new companies like Coupon in the e-commerce things, who are brothers, uh, who, are, who are very innovating companies are coming to the scene and trying to complete the full ecosystem of innovation in, in Korea. Korea is a very good example for, for Asia and how a very poor country 50 or 60 years ago came to a very innovative and richer country in, the, in 2020. Korea is a very good example for Asia and some people now are looking at this example to follow to make sure that they are they are following the right path when it comes to innovation. Uh, we are not going to go too much into China because everybody knows about China. Uh, everybody knows about China capacity when it comes to to uh, to uh, to innovation, and the tech industry worth more than 5.4 trillion USD in 2020, accounting for 35.2 percent of the national GDP. But you know it's interesting to see, to look also at China example coming from what China was, uh, you know, 100 years ago and what is China now leading, uh, one of the leaders, one of the two leaders uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the global economy, and especially when it comes to, uh, to technology. So, and you all know about China leading markets, e-commerce, social media, telco, uh, China have been investing a lot of money into infrastructure, into 5G, and into this kind of new technology, robotics, and it's a very good example to follow for sure. But you know, China is is, is at another level, and um, you know when you look at what's happening in the country and how these companies that were very innovative in the country were helping the companies were helping the countries to raise a certain level and compete with others in the world, which is the most important thing when it comes to innovation. 
yeah, you had big giants like Alibaba, Tencent, and Huawei that have been coming and and you know uh, opening the path to new to new small companies that were that that are now on on, on the road to to get this level of of excellence. Um, but you know, I'm European, and uh, you know, it's also important for me to give you some example of what's happening in 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 uh, in uh, you know in Europe, but also in the United States. How governments were investing a lot of money on innovation just to try to accompany the the transformation of their own economies economy. You know, this old economy in Europe was suffering, suffering from a lack of modernity of innovation, and Europe was losing was losing its uh, leadership in the world. So some countries in Europe, most of them today, and uh, due to the EU support, have been investing a lot in in, in innovation and technology. Um, Technology and non-technology for some of them, trying to solve uh, industry pro industrial problem in their country, but also in the, on the other side, train people and bring them uh, to the market again in this innovation economy. And it's good to look at the example of, of UK, for example. Uh, the, the tech industry was growing 2.6 faster in UK than the overall economy, which is a very good indicator uh, when it comes to look at the uh, at some countries that are facing problem with their own economy, 2.6 x faster than the overall economy, and it's worth um, you know uh, uh, 391 billion USD and employed more than than three million people in 2019. Sure, now the maybe the figures are different with what happened with with COVID, and we are getting new figures now. But you know, uh, it will give me the floor for another conference with updated figures and, and and show you that even during the pandemic, innovation economy was bringing solutions for for, for suffering countries. Um, France is also I'm French, so I can talk about my country. And uh, but you know, French government have been doing a lot of efforts the last uh, let's say ten years, creating banks like BPI, creating uh, you know French tech initiative, uh, putting a lot of money. Uh, into the innovation, uh, you know, innovation economy, uh, trying to solve, uh, you know, some problems in very in, in more traditional economies. Uh, the country have been suffering from these uh, traditional economies to to go down, and was trying to replace not to replace the economy, but to move this economy and to transform this economy uh, to to new competitiveness, uh, you know. And it was interesting to see where France was, uh, you know, investing its money, where French government was investing its money. It was especially in AI. Cybersecurity, clean energy, and and uh, uh, we 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 have we have seen uh, some you know uh, new companies raising. For example, last uh, uh, five years, uh, France was coming from let's say three or four unicorns to 23, 27 unicorns uh, in a period of five six years due to the, the government investment. I'm not saying that the government is creating unicorns. I'm just saying like um, putting in place some uh, you know policies. Uh, you know, creating some special plans, uh, investing uh, government money, public money into, uh, you know, uh, to support startups and innovative companies uh, has brought this, uh, this, this results. Um, when it comes to United States, uh, the tech industry employed, uh, you know, um, 12 million people and contributed to 1.8 trillion USD to the economy in 2019. And I'm not giving the figures after pandemic, but because, because you know it's important to see where we are coming from and where we are going. Pandemic has created a lot of problems, but pandemic also created a lot of opportunities when it comes to use uh, to use uh, you know technology to use uh, innovation to solve uh, you know and to tackle some problems. So this uncertainty situation and period uh, used you know where 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 you know backed by innovation and technology. To make sure that that you know uh, economies were solving or government were solving problems using technology or creating the good conditions for companies to raise and to solve these problems. Uh, a good information and, and you know uh, a good indication is to look at at, at this and uh, the source is from the Information Technology and Innovation Foundation, uh, and it was in 2020. I'm sure that I'm sure this number is now uh, still growing, but for every single dollar invested in R and D. Um, you know, every single dollar invested in R&D in R yields an average return of $2.2 in GDP growth over time, which is an, an amazing return. You know, there is few, it's, it's almost 100%, more than 100% return uh, when it comes to, uh, to, to investment. But it's amazing to see how much 
uh, you know, the money you invest into R&D and innovation can bring a return, fast return or maybe slower returns, but, uh, but uh, you know, significant return and solid returns to economy, uh, you know, to economy. Uh, how we do that? How we, how countries, uh, you know, were building uh, the right ecosystem uh, to uh, uh, facilitate uh, innovation initiatives, innovation, innovative companies to uh, raise and grow, to, 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 to create and raise in the countries. And it's almost everywhere the same. And um, countries that are late today should look at this very carefully uh, because this is the way that, you know, most of the countries, most of the economies are creating uh, today, uh, you know, their, 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 their ecosystem. Uh, the first one is, uh, you know, to ease the path uh, for a company setup, for example, to simplify the company the company formation. For example, it should be able to easily incorporate business uh, with a mani with a minimal uh, bureaucracy and costs. For example, in some countries, um, another way of creating a uh, you know a virtual uh, you know ecosystem is to be able to create a supportive uh, regulatory environment. For example. Uh, regulation should be designed to enable rather than stiff, stifle innovation. Uh, I've seen some countries that have that were trying to create the right environment when it comes to innovation by creating creating a lot of policies, a lot of measures, and it was counterproductive. But you know, when it comes to innovation, the policies that government and the regulations that government should put in place, they should aim to create a um, you know a level playing field for startups for innovative companies for innovative SMEs not only startup to promote competition and to ensure cons consumer protection nothing more than this another another thing which is very important and some countries and France did it very well UK did it very well but US is not doing it because it's coming naturally from from the the local ecosystem is access to capital which is something very important for innovating companies can be small companies that can be bigger companies as soon as they are innovative they need they need capital to invest and you're sure that during all their life cycle they will be they will need they will be in need of capital so they need funding to grow their businesses and you know government and local and you know local authorities should create the perfect legal framework for startups for innovative companies and should facilitate access to capital through measures such as tax incentives, subsidies, or grants, for example. Some countries, they did very well. For example, if you take the example of Korea, they did it very well. But we'll give another example later with India, with Korea, and with other countries. Another thing which is very important, I think it's the most important thing in, in, in the innovation, uh, you know, innovation economy, um, uh, because it's related to job creation. Uh, all the countries, all the economies should pay attention to this. You know, the most important thing for any company, for any innovative company, is to get access to local talents, train people. And uh, this is important. Why? Because hiring and developing the local talent helps these companies to build a workforce that understands the local market and culture. And they can adapt to changing circumstances and need, you know, and needs more quickly. And it's very important that that all the education system, all the your training systems supply this kind of talents all the way down, you know, or, you know, continuously to make sure that companies will either uh, be created in the country or move to the country. And this is why, you know, you have this FDI things, the foreign direct investment, which is more and more important today. And companies move, especially not only where they find capital, but they move also where they find talents. Another thing which is important, which is the intellectual property protection. Uh, you know, I told you about R&D before and uh, patents. It's very important to see how governments, how local authorities can, uh, you know, develop some good frameworks uh, to make sure that the perfect legal framework, uh, you know, is, is developed in the country and could provide strong protection for intellectual property rights, including patents, trademarks, and copyrights. Another thing which is in link with the, the talents and the job creation is the everything related to employment law, uh, and this is something very important. Uh, it, they should be flexible enough. I'm not saying that it should be completely fully open; it should protect, uh, you know, the, the you know the employees, but it should be flexible enough to make sure that people can experiment with new business models and you know hire the talent they need as soon as they can. You see that there is another problem with this, but we'll, we'll talk about it later when it looks when you look at what's happening now on the layoffs, especially in some countries. 
in the tech and some attrition, uh, you know, which is uh, universally attrition that is coming today in some economies, you can be scared of this. But employment law can be like helping on both sides when people are hiring fast, fast and when people are laying fast. So it should be like something that that local government should think about. Another thing is everything related to data privacy. And data privacy is very important in, 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 in our economy. You know that, that today, most of the innovative companies, uh, most of them are relating on, 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 on data, access to data, which is something very important. But on the other side, uh, you know, uh, government should provide a perfect legal framework for, uh, for uh, anyone willing to uh, protect user data while enabling this innovative uh, company to collect and analyze this data to, to improve their products and to solve problems. And the last one, but not the least one, which is something very important to look at when it comes to innovative uh, company, uh, companies and, 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 and innovative economy, which is the exit mechanism. And it's related with tax, uh, you know, taxation and tax uh, in general. Uh, government should facilitate this. Um, for example, uh, it's good when a corporate company uh, from a country acquire into an ME uh, process, a local company also, or uh, that a local company, for example, to get access to the stock exchange market uh, by, uh, by initial uh, you know, public offering. Uh, and government should create the condition for this to happen easier in a country. And you know, uh, there are some exam good examples. For example, people trying to solve their problems. Uh, when you look at talent shortage, which is something very important, uh, Singapore, which is a, a very good example, they have been creating something called the Skills Future, which is an upscaling program to, uh, to uh, financially support uh, training and upscaling uh, for anyone willing to join the, the, the tech economy. Uh, the outcome was to help bridge the talent gap and bring more skilled workers entering the startup ecosystem, for example. But it will be also good for SMEs. Another, uh, you know, government have been trying to uh, tackle a problem of, of uh, lack of supportive uh, regulatory frameworks. India government did something very interesting, which is the, the Startup India Initiative. Uh, to make to make uh, to make you know the, the the situation easier for any uh, startups or SME innovative SME to to operate and to attract investment. Um, some of other uh, government, for example, South Korea, Singapore, or may, even you know private company, they were trying to solve the problem of uh, the limited access to funding and mentorship in some countries, and they came with some uh, very good uh, initiatives and programs. Uh, startups, for example. Uh, uh, in Korea, they have been working with Techstars, for example, uh, to provide funding. Um, Singapore government, once again, um, create a, a program called the, the SG Initi Initiative that was uh, creating the condition for any mentor or any uh, investors to come and invest into any innovative companies. Uh, but also uh, private companies, I think there is also some solutions uh, coming from the private sector, but not, not only the public sector. Um, uh, which are, for example, companies like Alibaba Group uh, that were uh, creating this uh, Alibaba Entrepreneurs Fund in Hong Kong to help and support uh, young companies to find the first budget they need to, to go to market. One thing uh, uh, that can be also something to solve the, uh, uh, to solve the problems and the uncertainty on, on, on some markets uh, is how people are gathering, how companies are gathering Corporates are gathering with startups, with government, with venture capital, with universities, all together into, uh, you know, uh, 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 one common objective, which is facing uh, the, the, uh, the uncertain coming times. They have been doing this uh, when we get through the pandemic, and now we are getting into a new period of maybe not stress, but, but doubt, uh, which is important uh, to look at and to do it together. Um, and this ha this is happening more than we we think, and it, this is happening more and more and more. For example, I've seen many corporate companies that are today creating JVs uh, with startups. I've seen corporate companies creating JVs with government and startup. So a lot of things are happening today. More and more transfer tra technology transfer coming from universities to corporate, but also universities to government. I've seen some example in the UAE, for example, uh, where uh, you know, the local government is like uh, taking some IPs from universities and research and transform them into, the, into services to the population, for example. Um, some good examples last years, for example, uh, Grab, uh, you know, have been creating a, a, a 
a partnership with the government of Malaysia and Indonesia, uh, you know, related to electrical vehicles. So a lot of problems uh, occurs in the countries when it comes to get access to a car. So the government is like, uh, you know, uh, partnering with, uh, with, the, the, with Grab Company, which is a private company, to offer a service which is backed by, by, by both sides. Uh, Grab is helping on the cars and, and the government is helping on, on access to the roads, access to the, to the local regulation and everything. Another example is uh, the cooperation between Samsung and Vietnam, which is a very good example. Uh, Samsung, uh, you know, knew that there is a lot of good talents in Vietnam and, 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 and you know, access to, uh, access to this talent is not that easy, but is like, uh, 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 you know, supported by, lo by the local government. And they created this R&D hub in, in, in Vietnam, which is a very good uh, example of collaboration between a private company and a government. But uh, last but not least, uh, the work that Alibaba done in, in Thailand, for example, creating the free trade hub, uh, knowing that there is a need for the region to have this free trade hub. And it was interesting to see the cooperation between the government and this private company. So a way of getting out of, uh, you know, difficulty, uh, you know, uh, you know, uncertain time, uh, you know, um, economy problems uh, is to make sure that, you know, everyone is trying to uh, uh, create the condition for, uh, you know, cooperation and partnership. Uh, we have been going through very nice example of uh, things happening, uh, you know, post-COVID, uh, um, from post-COVID to now. Um, government, uh, innovative companies, investors, uh, universities, corporate companies uh, were trying to, to solve problem and to associate uh, into a very positive uh, project. But, you know, just uh, a couple of days ago, we have seen, I've been attending to this, uh, that the bank goes, uh, you know, bankrupt in, in the United States and especially in Silicon Valley, which is seen as the uh, most important area for innovative companies and startups. So this uh, is a signal uh, that we are uh, for sure entering into a, a maybe a more difficult period. Uh, and it's important to have a look at, at what's happening there and what is what are the what are the, the you know, the the consequences of, of, of this to happen. I remember, I remind you what, what happened in 2000 uh, when the, the internet, uh, you know, bubble burst. And uh, uh, some of the people around, around us are asking themselves, are we getting back to this situation or is it completely different? Are we into the end of the cycle or are we into a new cycle? I remember you that 2021 was at the peak in terms of investment into innovative companies by private sector. And but also by, 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 by public sector uh, with their your public banks, for example, and everybody was investing. And now it, like, it has came like back and, 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 and some people are afraid of what's happening now in the world, and especially with the inflation, uh, everything related to, to the war happening in Ukraine. And uh, everybody's like staying and uh, waiting for, for, uh, for uh, what's going to happen in the, in the coming months and years. But it has impacts already. For example, you have been attending to a lot of layoffs in many countries, uh, in the United States, for example, but also in Europe. Uh, and not only into, uh, you know, tech firms, but also, uh, but, but it, it also more traditional companies uh, like Uxvarna, Klarna, Finair, uh, Air France, for example. So it's important to have a look at these figures uh, because, you know, 120,000 people have been laid off worldwide in 2022, which is a huge thing, which is a huge thing. And it's very a concern for everyone, should be a concern for everyone. I'm not saying that uh, uh, it's not uh, um, uh, it, it's not uh, a lot, it's a lot, uh, but you know, it's important that government look at this very carefully. Uh, why these things are happening today, why it's happening now and why it didn't happen before. For sure, everything related to uh, uh, you know, energy increase uh, prices, everything related to the war uh, in Ukraine, everything related to inflation happening in the countries has an impact on that. But it's important to see also that some of this uh, layoff had been done like voluntarily, not only like because of the local situation, it's because people are preparing themselves for another uh, cycle. Uh, when you look at what's happening in the companies in the US, these companies are not suffering from any kind of economic problems. Uh, you know, Alphabet is Google, so they are not suffering from any kind of financial problem. They are just preparing the new cycle that we are entering. In same for Meta, same for Amazon, same for Microsoft. Same also for uh, for Asia. It's happening also in Asia. 
uh, in these countries, uh, a lot of layoffs have been happening and still happen, and it's voluntary. And and uh, this attrition is a concern for everyone um, because uh, you know it's it's a signal that that you know in, the innovation economy is still something like uh, fragile, uh, but it's uh, it's a wonderful opportunity. So this is a, you know this is sending a signal. Something is happening now, and something is happening that will change uh, the way that companies are looking at their uh, market. Uh, employees uh, are looking at their companies. Governments are looking at their economies. Uh, you know, universities and training uh, centers are looking at the way they are training people. So we are entering into a new period, a new cycle, uh, where I think it's going to be more jobs, more opportunities, more uh, you know, innovative uh, companies, more unicorns, and more positive things in the coming uh, you know three to five years. And government should be prepared to this and continue to invest into innovation economy. This is a signal that it's a crisis and never, never, never waste, never waste, ne ne never miss a, a crisis. When you used to say uh, Winston Churchill, and something is happening now, and government should be aware of where they should put their money into this crisis. And this is uh, not the reason why things are happening, but this is a good signal. You have been attending recently. Uh, at this, uh, at this, uh, you know, this uh, conversation, for example, and this uh, uh, debate uh, in the in the economies, uh, U.S. looking at TikTok and uh, Europe lo looking at uh, Chat GPT. Uh, so now we have three blocks: Europe, Asia, and the uh, United States, and they are all fighting on who is going to take the lead on the technology, on AI, for example, who is going to take the lead on the data. It is. It is Already the case was all the case before with the previous uh, companies, uh, you know, in uh, United States and China. But now the game is open again, and uh, we are attending to something which is, uh, you know, I think unique uh, in 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 uh, in our history, uh, which is uh, AI coming and get it, uh, and and getting and being adopted by a, a maximum of people all over the planet. So it will change the way that we. Think about how we work, change the way that we think about how we interact with people, change the way um, about how we, uh, you know, consume, uh, change the way about how we create uh, every day and being assisted by AI will change definitely the way that we are looking at our, our own lives. So we have, to, we have to be careful and we all, be, we all are careful about this today and government should prepare uh, you know, the right environment to make sure that this innovation are going to create more value than it's going to destroy value. So thank you for having me today. And if there is any question, I will be delighted to respond to you anytime. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Rauti, for your wonderful uh, detailed presentation. And, well, and it was a very, very kind of eye-opening uh, session to learn why innovation is very, very critical for a continent like Asia, where we have a, like, a whole bunch of like a, too much, like uh, I won't say too much, it's a full of a population where we have a talented skills and everything. <clears throat> That's a very critical point I observe. And um, thank you so much uh, uh, for your session now. And um, uh, you are also very detailedly explained that um, innovation is uh, particularly, it is very important for the increasing the productivity, job creation, and uh, improve the quality of life. And uh, you also pointed out like, um, we should consider this kind of uh, the issues what happening with the tech uh, companies like uh, wherever we see it's full of layoffs and everywhere so i uh, truly understand your point that we should wait for next two, three to five years to see the full of changes where a lot of opportunities will be there to grab so uh, i second your opinion on that and uh, thank you so much and now we will open the floor for questions and uh, I could say uh, one question from uh, Mr. Amit Kumar. Uh, what are the some emerging, uh, just give me a second. What are some emerging trends in innovation and productivity and how can companies stay ahead of the curve? This is a question from our viewer, Mr. Amit Kumar uh, from India, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, for sure, uh, when you look at what's happening uh, uh, today in uh, in uh, uh, in the world, and you follow what's happening 
uh, you know, on the hype cycle uh, of technology. Um, everything related to, uh, you know, energy, uh, mobility, uh, healthcare, um, uh, you know, a lot of things around the security and cybersecurity are raising today. So, and, uh, and um, uh, everything also linked to, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing. The sector is amazing today. Everything related to uh, food, uh, food and, uh, and, uh, and the wellness, well-being, which are, you know, which are very interesting sectors. And um, these are sectors that are, look, you know, it's, it's interesting to see how things like this happen. Uh, you know, and it has, you know, a pandemic, a pandemic has an impact on that. Um, people during pandemic, they refocus on very important things. And uh, companies that have been created after pandemic are very interesting to look at. They were focusing on solving real problems. For example, a lot of company uh, were created into the carbon uh, sector. A lot of companies were created into the energy saving sector. A lot of energy into a lot of companies into uh, the cybersecurity sector also. So this has an impact on our daily life. This has an impact on the productivity of some countries and companies, uh, you know, uh, they always uh, have to uh, look at two things to stay ahead of the curve. Uh, first of all is to look at profitability uh, and which is something very important today. Uh, you know that uh, investors were investing a lot of money into companies that were showing uh, traction, uh, traction and promises on the market. Uh, but today, uh, the investors are looking at: uh, Can you show me the profitability of your companies and how your company will be sustainable? I don't, I don't think uh, it's something new. It should be like this. Uh, but during last years, uh, everybody was looking at what's happening with the unicorns. A lot of funds have been investing a lot of money because they were feeling that they were traction into a market and they wanted to take the market. So they were investing a lot of money uh, into these companies. Now it's what's happening and people, uh, you, know, uh, you know, this financial crisis that we are facing and, uh, and we are going through, uh, people are looking more about uh, profitable companies, sustainable company, companies that are addressing real problems using technology and uh, doing it uh, with the right talents. Thank you so much for your wonderful insights. And I have the same, uh, similar kind of questions from, again, uh, Mr. Amit. It's a follow-up of uh, last question. Is there any potential risks or downsides to focusing too heavily on innovation and productivity? It's everything in, uh, in life. Everything should be balanced. Um, uh, I do agree with him on some parts. Uh, I think that in some economies, uh, you know, the, the power of uh, short, uh, you know, small and medium sized company is very important. For example, if you took look, uh, look uh, at countries like France, 95% of the French economy is uh, relying on small and medium sized companies in very traditional sectors. But uh, these traditional sectors, uh, you know, have to make sure that the way they produce, the way they, the way they go to market, the way they promote themselves uh, should be, imp uh, you know, will be impacted by the lack of, for example, uh, digital digitalization or innovation into the technology into their process. So I do agree with him on one part, which is like, we have to take care of these traditional businesses that are out of technology, out of innovation, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, giving, you know, uh, you know, giving services and, and providing services to their customers. But on the other end, we don't have to miss that tomorrow, the, the, the competition will be exclusively on uh, the way that countries are able to show their level of innovation, their level of technology, their level of, of uh, you know, uh, talent, uh, talent and potential within these sectors. It's interesting to see also that, uh, you know, you can have a very traditional business like this, which is like uh, vertical, and, uh, uh, and, you know, it's uh, your skills, uh, your competencies, uh, your traditions, uh, you know, everybody, everything related to, uh, you know, craftsmen and everything, which are very like vertical. And you have to add on top something like horizontal, which is like the technology. And as soon as you have T-shape like this, uh, you give yourself more chance on the market and more chance uh, in the competition. Um, so it's like everything we have to balance the way that we are 
supporting innovation and the way that we are supporting on the other side more traditional businesses. Uh, thank you so much for your detailed um, insights on that. Uh, in fact, I do believe on that. Uh, we, uh, it should be very balanced approach. For example, if uh, the world knows that uh, how Kodak and uh, actually uh, collapsed because they they could not focus on the more innovative kind of approach, right? Those, that's the one of the kind of uh, global case studies what we could say, and also the Fujitsu case. They are exactly. Fuji film actually. Fuji film actually being a film making company. To now they invested a lot into the innovative approaches, and they the companies is striving like anything. So this is the kind of a, our real life case studies where the innovation is really playing a big role, and we cannot just um, uh, away from the innovation. And of course, it, this should be more balanced approach. And uh, I think uh, that, that is a very important point which you pointed. I completely agree on that. And uh, now my next question. Uh, um, comes from your uh, this, uh, presentation and you know in one of your slides you mentioned that uh, South Korea and China they've invested a lot and a lot of innovations have contributed in, uh, in driving their economic growth. Uh, definitely government played a very major role in bringing this innovation impact. What difference uh, you could see in other Asian countries and what should be followed in terms of government support, policy, or ecosystem, by seeing the uh, like a positive impact from these two countries, I'm talking about the Asian perspectives. What other Asian countries could learn from these two countries? Countries like you know, um, when you look at Korea example, Singapore example, India example, India is good. You know, I, I see many many investors today from United States and. And from uh, European countries going to Asia and trying to to invest in Asia in India, for example, um, Japan was doing it for a long time, and Japan is now coming back to invest a lot into innovation through, uh, you know, uh, government mechanisms. Um, other countries should follow, and especially smaller countries. Uh, you know, I'm amazed to see what Laos is doing today, uh, and uh, you know, Laos is doing is doing very interesting things. Um, in more traditional businesses, for example, in mining or uh, you know hydropower, uh, this you know this country is booming uh, at the moment or was booming in in, that, in the last years. But these kind of countries should have a look. I'm not telling uh, Laos what to, uh, to say. I'm not, I'm not advising Laos to do anything. I'm not. I, I stay in my place. But but smaller country like Mongolia, Nepal, Bangladesh people who have like uh, this workforce available on the market should definitely have a look at. At this innovation, uh, you know, economy and government investment into uh, into people. But because at the end of the day, when you look at what's happening and what's Korea, what what Korea did, what Japan did, what you know China did, at the end of the day, what did they do? They invested into people, and this is the most important thing. At the end of the day, when when you have a very successful successful company, uh, you know, that is uh, reaching certain level of 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 success and. Uh, Creating uh, value for the country, creating jobs, creating, uh, you know, uh, you know, contributing to GDP growth in the country. When you look at this company that is very successful, Alibaba or or uh, or Tencent or Grab or uh, or Naver, these kind of companies in Korea, or uh, you know, when you look at this, definitely at the end of the day, uh, uh, they are founders. They are people creating these companies, hiring people, hiring talents. All these talents have been. Uh, had been trained, uh, you know, through universities program, through through schools program in their country, and this is this talent that is very important to solve the problem, this economic this economic problem in in the countries. So for me, smaller countries that are now late when it comes to economy, uh, you know, I'm also surprised that a, a, a country like Thailand is not investing more into this. Vietnam is doing very well. Vietnam is now pushing a lot on that, and I I think they are on the path to do that. But you know, Philippines also they have a lot of talents, but they are not at that level of uh, technology they should be when you look at the number of people they have. Because at the end of the day, it's always a game number. The more people you have, the more people you can train, and the workforce that you have in the country, uh, you know, uh, combined with the the the, the potential, uh, you know, investors that you have, and uh, the the support of the government makes this uh, positive. So I would definitely advise to smaller countries. Uh, to take this as a leverage to maybe 
support their economy or reinitiate their economy or reignite their economy. Thank you, Rauti, for your, um, again, the wonderful uh, uh, explanations. Now, my next question uh, in, is connected with uh, what you said about Japan. So when, uh, particularly from your, uh, again, your presentation, you were mentioning about the Singapore, how they deal with the talent shortages and also the IPR intellectual property protection. So country like Japan, it's uh, now, uh, they have a kind of now issue is a kind of a, not only the talent shortages and also the population declining where they do not have the resource, the human resources um, going forward. So of course they have a lot of IPR protections. Uh, you can you would agree with me that uh, Japan is one of the countries in the world who uh, submits a lot of IPRs, right? So when uh, on one side they have a lot of IPRs uh, uh, submission, but on the other side they do not have the resources. So this is a kind of very peculiar situation. So from your perspective, how do you think? Uh, to deal with the talent shortages and um, also having more IPRs. So uh, how do you think uh, from what is your perspective on that? Um, you know, uh, listen, listen, listen carefully to what I'm going to say. I bet definitely on Japan. And uh, uh, I bet on Japan um, for the coming uh, five, to, five to six, seven years. Uh, Jap according to me, Japan will come back to what it was in terms of innovation before. Why? Because it's in the, the DNA of the country to be innovative. And, you know, we don't have to miss this point. It's very important to look at what, you know, once again, I believe in people. I believe in people. I believe in the way that people are contributing to their uh, country and their and the innovation in their countries. So when the, when the, when the, the, the innovation DNA is embedded into the people, it, it comes much more easier to follow uh, you know, government initiative, government policies, or even private sector policies. So the problem that uh, Japan is, is facing, uh, and it's the same problem as uh, all countries like in Europe, will be the same, the same problem. Um, and I think they are tackling it uh, at the moment, and they are, because I had the chance to meet with some people in Japan recently, and especially uh, government officials uh, that, uh, told me about uh, how Japan is now trying to invest again and again and again into new economy, new new economy, and uh, innovation economy. But um, they will have to 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 deal have to deal, deal with three things. The first is, uh, when, as you said, uh, the lack of talent, um, which is not real. It's not the lack of talents. It's the number of talent. Uh, you know, they have beautiful talents in Japan, uh, very creative one. Uh, but in very specific areas like AI and, uh, and uh, for example, everything related to Web3, blockchain and everything, I think they have beautiful specialists, beautiful, uh, you know, talents, but they don't have the number uh, enough to make sure that, for example, if tomorrow, like a company is raising in, 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 in Japan and hire, like, has to hire like 20,000 people, uh, I think it's going to be a problem for them. So I think government is now putting a lot of efforts on that, trying to, uh, you know, train a lot of people into this, uh, you know, technology, this new technology. And I believe in the power of Japan to make sure to, to, to make it happen. Another thing is, um, and I've been uh, facing this in Japan, which is uh, today the uh, investment culture. Uh, uh, you have uh, an investment culture, but regarding the size of the country, uh, and uh, the, 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 the creativity of the country and the people in the country when it comes to create very innovative companies, I think the size of the uh, potential of investment in the country is like uh, in, into this economy is maybe a little bit, uh, you know, small and uh, maybe the culture um, to take risks uh, into very early, early stages companies uh, that are innovative is maybe something that definitely has to be enhanced uh, in, in the country. And also another thing, which is like the local regulation, uh, it's it's an island, and uh, you know it's like in the UK. Uh, but look at what UK was doing before Brexit, and uh, how they have been investing uh, in their economy, and especially in the innovative. You have seen my my figures. Uh, it's one of the best you know successes in in Europe, UK, uh, when it comes to technology. I'm sure that Japan is going even they are despite they are an island and despite they have like this. Uh, uh, you know, grow, uh, peop, uh, you know, population growing in age. I'm sure that you know. I bet on Japan for the next uh, for the next year. I'm sure that Japan is going is coming back to to something 
uh, important and and because because of the of the local DNA which is oriented on innovation. So um, the IP regulation is another problem, and uh, I think uh, Japan is too much protected. But it's my opinion, and uh, maybe they should uh, maybe they will release a little bit. Maybe they will try to release it a little bit. Uh, to make sure that everyone can come uh, to the game and play in the game, and especially people from abroad coming to Japan and trying to use Japanese technology to uh, to create businesses. Uh, uh, and the last point, um, uh, which is an important point, and when you look at what's happening in the United States, uh, and, and it's a very good example, it's a very, very good example. When you look at the CEOs of the biggest companies in the United States, uh, most of them are imported. Uh, they are not originally from you from USA. Uh, most of them are coming from different countries: India, uh, China. Uh, most of them are Asian. <laughs> most of them are Asian. So maybe it's good also for Asia to create the conditions for their own talents to stay in the countries and to recreate the value in the country. I'm not saying that it's not good to travel, but I'm saying that sometimes uh, the brain drain is a problem for some economies. It was the case for Europe for a long time. It's still the case in Europe for a long time. Uh, so it's important to see what's happening in the, in the USA. So opening countries to potential uh, foreigners that can come and invest into the countries and be part of the local ecosystem. Uh, it's happening a lot in Korea. It's happening a lot more and more in Asia. And it will happen also in Japan in the coming years. Thank you so much uh, for your, uh, your, again, the very detailed uh, inputs, particularly on uh, Japan. Uh, very positive comments. And um, uh, I hope, yes, I'm also hoping that Japan will come up and have a more innovative. And uh, I, I think they should be able to manage uh, in the coming years by uh, have investing a lot. Uh, like uh, by utilizing their DNA, what they have been doing for so many years. I think definitely sure. it's going to have a fruitful results uh, going forward. Thank you so much on your comment. Uh -huh. And my next question is about um, the recently what happened in US, Silicon Valley Bank bankruptcy. And uh, of course, everybody was watching and uh, how this is going to be an uh, impact for globally. And uh, definitely, there are very important key takeaway learnings from what had happened with the SVB and followed by another bank in US. And uh, from your perspective, so what measures um, we need to take to avoid this kind of collapse, uh, particularly from startup perspective, because startups they heavily relied on, relied on these kind of banks, right? So uh, what kind of uh, measures are we need to avoid in future? I'm not sure how many uh, percentage of startups they really had a big impact on this, but uh, from your perspective, I just would like to hear from you. I think uh, uh, at the end, a uh, few companies suffered from this problem because, uh, you know, um, the bank has been acquired, and uh, and um, and um, uh, the government has bailed out uh, the bank and uh, invested uh, to make sure that people were not losing their money, especially U.S. companies. Um, you know, when you look at the problem, it's not a problem of being innovative or supporting uh, tech startups, because actually. Uh, a lot of startups were were there and were putting their money in these banks and were you know trusting this bank. I think is um, the way that this bank was uh, behaving on the markets and uh, the positions that the bank took on the market and and this is where the bank had problems. Uh, for example, you had the same problem also in uh, Europe with the Credit Suisse, and you see that the bank has been acquired by, H by HSBC and uh, and some problem I see with OQ also in Germany. Uh, but is it due to innovative innovation economy or is it due to, uh, let's say, the way that these banks were behaving on the markets, trying to, you know, taking risky positions or, uh, you know, investing more money than they have? I think it's more about like uh, regulating the way that these banks, uh, you know, um, behave on the market than how they support the innovation economy. So, but it's, these are signals that something is happening and uh, that you know governments should be and local authorities should be very careful uh, in the coming years but uh, being careful doesn't mean stopping innovate uh, you know investing into innovation economy but it's completely the opposite they should like in this time of crisis this time of difficulties 
I think the government should continue to invest more and more and more and more into uh, this innovation economy while uh, making sure that the the infrastructure, uh, banks, uh, you know, uh, insurances and everything are uh, con uh, not controlled because, you know, I don't want, I don't like, uh, you know, too much controlled economy. For example, uh, yesterday, uh, European Union decided to, uh, you know, to um, uh, regulate uh, usage of uh, AI. So it's, I don't think is this is the way to do it. I don't think this is the right way to do it. I think it's important to regulate uh, for the good, but to leave enough space for anyone to take risks, uh, continue to invest, and try to solve economic problem while contributing to the GDP. So I don't know if I responded to your question because it's a very tough questions and a uh, question, and it maybe it should be like a full uh, conference on that. Um, but I think regulation is very good uh, when. Uh, you know, it's done with the, uh, the right level of control uh, and um, control the impact that these uh, players like banks have on the, on the real economy. Thank you. Thank you, Rauti. Uh, in fact, yeah, I, I just wanted to have your opinion because it's very difficult to analyze and uh, talk about for uh, such a long time. Anyway, thank you so much for uh, your, on your inputs. Uh, my next question is a continuation of this uh, follow-up uh, about what you touched upon the AI. So now uh, what you said, uh, Europe is uh, trying to regulate. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in Quite your good. presentation also, you have talked about the the recently talk of the uh, topic is a chat GPT. So I'm trying to um, connect how this um, uh, like a technology like AI and most of now the big tech company like uh, Google and uh, other companies, they are trying to invest more and more on this AI to compete with the chat GPT. And now, now I'm seeing the other side so when the AI um, the technology grows like this uh, so what would be impact on the labor market resources what we have country like uh, india so how it's going to because um, the, the, we have like uh, india like uh, they have 60 percent uh, young populations they are very talented so how this is going to have a big impact on our economic how it's good so i'm trying to understand uh, from your perspective what could be the kind of impact for sure it will have an impact uh, for sure. Um, but the interesting thing is that it's going to invent new jobs. Uh, you know, we all know about this uh, Schlumpeter uh, law. And, uh, uh, but I think it, has, it will have an impact on uh, uh, not destroying jobs, but creating new jobs uh, with new approaches in jobs, uh, uh, for example. I know that, for example, in Europe, um, uh, you know, they proposed, uh, you know, new rules uh, to tackle concerns about the risk around the uh, chat GPT, for example, chatbot and AI technology. And, you know, it's interesting to see uh, how they are trying to, uh, um, you know, control uh, the, the, the way that these uh, technologies are coming and booming on the market because uh, we don't have any framework today. We didn't. We didn't even think about creating a fam framework to protect uh, jobs, to protect uh, you know uh, you know employees from from this new technology. And as we don't know, uh, we protect. We we prefer to close everything, to protect everything, uh, and to discuss rather than letting letting it go, and prepare the people on the on, on prepare the people on the other side. I don't think ChatGPT will have any impact on India jobs. I don't think so. I don't. I don't Thank see you. because I don't. I don't think it's gonna be any impact on India jobs, really. You know, I think it's gonna increase India jobs because it's gonna create new jobs with new competencies, new skills, uh, new opportunities, new businesses. Uh, you know, because you know, uh, it's like we are in 2000, 2001, 2000, let's say 2002, 2003, after the the, the big crisis in the internet economy while there is uh, everything to build again and the technology is ready on shelf and ready to be used. So AI is ready since a long time. The only problem is how people are, uh, you know, ready to adopt the technology and how government will let this be done by companies. But there are a lot of services, a lot of new businesses, a lot of opportunities that will be created around AI that will create value and growth GDP in the countries. So 
I'm not at all afraid of what's happening on AI. I'm afraid of the battle that is behind AI, a battle as a, uh, uh, you know at a high level, uh, government level, on who is take, going to take the lead on who, and who is going to control who. This is my only fear. But on the technology itself, I don't have any fear. I think it's a good thing for uh, our economy and economies, as long as we are able to prepare the people to get uh, access to the talent, to the, to, the, to the training, to the contents, uh, to the competencies, to the skills, to be part of the game. It's very important that government put their effort on preparing the generation to make sure that they will be ready to face this technology. Because it's not different from mobile. It's not different from this new paradigm, paradigms that we have been facing, going through during the last 10 or 20 years of our lives. We, uh, for example, I'm 50, so I knew the world before internet, and I, you know, I've been constantly adapting myself to what's happening, and I'm still working. The only thing is the way that people are going to adapt themselves to the situation, and some people are not ready to do that, so we have to prepare them to be to get ready too. But it will be amazing on the number of opportunities. If it's not bringing all the problem, which are more geopolitical problems uh, behind it. When you look at what's happening with TikTok in the US and what's happening with Chat GTP, GPT in Europe. And now Chat GPT is coming to Asia and Asia is using it. But uh, my question is, uh, any, any company in Asia is able to create something as a Chat GPT? Any company in uh, Europe uh, are, is able to do that? So it's interesting to see that uh, you know, the game is now changing and there will be a new game and uh, there are seats available in this game. So we should all be prepared to take a seat or to prepare ourselves to take a seat. Thank you so much. Well, well taken um, of your positive comment on the new technologies like chat GPT. Uh, well, well noted. And um, yes, I think we have uh, um, uh, reached our time to close yeah. our session. Uh, before we close our session, I would like to um, uh, have your final key takeaway messages to our viewers today on our topic that is uh, um, uh, unlocking the innovation, power of innovation for productivity. So what is your key takeaway messages what, which you would like to give for our viewers? Um, I, like the, I like the sentence of, uh, of uh, Antoine Lavoisier, the chemist. Uh, uh, nothing, uh, nothing, uh, nothing is created. Uh, nothing is lost. It's all about transformation. And uh, uh, so he died for this, actually. <laughs> and um, but it's interesting to see that we are constantly transforming, uh, transforming uh, the economy, transforming uh, the way we consume, the way we move, the way we travel, the way we talk, the way we interact. So. And at the end of the day, we are all transforming ourselves too because we have to adapt every time. And the, for, and the, the strength that we have as human is to be able to adapt to any situation at the end of the day. So my, my takeaway is uh, to people listening, um, you know, don't stop your efforts investing into a, in innovation. Don't, don't stop. Even you see that there is like bad times, uh, you know, people losing their jobs uh, or, uh, you know, companies shutting down. Uh, you know, you have to continue to invest because this is where, uh, you know, should, investment should be uh, to prepare the next generation and the future generation uh, to, uh, to, to be adapted to this, uh, to this uh, new and amazing and thrilling world that we are going to face in the coming five to 10 years. It's going to be faster than what we have been living the last five or 10 years. So we have, been, we have to get prepared to this and government should continue to work on, on investing into into people at the end of the day it's investing into people investing into people this is the most important thing thank you so much thank you so much for your um, wonderful time today for uh, sharing with us uh, on uh, giving you so many insights about the innovation and the critical of innovations and yes uh, thank you so much um, uh, mr rauti for your valuable insights and i believe all our viewers found your information and insights very useful I think so. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. I couldn't cover everything. We you know we can we you know it's a, we can have this conversation for ten years. <laughs> right, right. But you know, I I did my best, and humbly, I, I I had a pleasure to do it. Yeah. In the interest of time, we are unable to have many questions, and I would request to post your questions in the comment sections if you have any, and we shall respond 
to those questions uh, in the comment box uh, by email. Um, APO Productivity Talk uh, will be held every week featuring leading experts. Um, so please subscribe this APO channel and stay tuned. Goodbye.